the United States of America secretly bombs Cambodia. Cambodia had been one of the most fertile food producing areas in Indochina. Between 1970 and 1973, the US forces dropped over 500,000 tons of bombs on food growing areas, destroying the irrigation works and killing livestock. The population of Phnom Penh, the capital, increased from 2 million to 6 million out of the country's total population of 8 million. As a result, a grave food crisis developed. When uh, I was uh, a young king in Cambodia, that was in the years 40s, there were already predictions uh, saying that black people coming from the forest went into our towns and uh, Cambodia would have to face misery. So the citizens in towns had to disappear and uh, there would be famine, hunger, and uh, there would be streets without uh, people, uh, houses without people. The predictions were made by monks, Buddhist monks. In April 1975, all uh, the citizens to go to, uh, uh, to the countryside and uh, they killed so, so, so many people. Pol Pot uh, is mad, you know, like Hitler, like Hitler. During the Cambodian genocide, the people suffered the atrocities of the communist Pol Pot Khmer Rouge regime in the mid-70s. The Cambodian people were subjected to working in labor camps while others died from execution, starvation and disease. Patricia Schroeder said, three weeks ago, the camp at Sakyo was an open field. 30,000 people were dumped in horrible conditions with no facilities. The camp contains the best and the worst instincts of mankind. The Cambodian refugees arrived looking like walking death. They were in a terrible state. It's like nothing I've ever seen. It's emotionally overwhelming. The First Lady, Rosalind Carter. Let me explain why I'm making this film. I was living in Bangkok, Thailand in 1979. I attended a meeting held by the Thai Red Cross. Here, I answered a call for service and an appeal for help. Nothing could have prepared me for what I was about to witness when I arrived at the camp. Only a handful of volunteers were there to deal with the crisis. 35,000 people and the major part of the Khmer Rouge army were living without food, water, medical supplies or shelter. The Thai military granted me permission to remain on the camp at night to care for the unaccompanied children. When the camp became an official United Nations holding center, the American ambassador's wife, Shepi Abramovitz, gave me funding to start an art project for the children. This allowed them to express their feelings about their traumatic experiences, as well as uniting them as a group and lifting their spirits. In February of 1980, I documented my project at the United Nations in Bangkok for the care of unaccompanied Kampuchean minors in temporary holding centers under handicrafts. 
When I returned to live in the United States, I began to feel unwell, with anxiety and panic. My heart would pound and I experienced fear as if the ground beneath me would drop away into an abyss. I couldn't sleep at night. I would jolt awake as if someone had surprised me. I had intense feelings of alienation, as if I were encountering a foreign planet. But now I'm able to talk about one of the darkest periods of the 20th century. Oh, abide with